available. Like, and it was like, so it was like, it was a, sh- it was a totally opposite approach of the long ramp up to the album re- release. Um, and so this just goes to show you, everyone is trying to figure this out and experiment and play with it and see what works. Exactly. Now I know you have a list and I've been kind of buttoned into it, but I'm That's just going right. to keep, I'm going to keep buttoning in for just a couple of seconds here. Go for it. 2014 also was the year, in my opinion, of the emergence of the independent artist as far as uh, getting recognition from the Grammy Awards. Did you know over 50% of the Grammys uh, winners in 2014 were in indie artists? They were not major label artists. I saw that, and I think this has been a trend that's actually been pretty, they had a pretty high percentage for the last few years, if I'm not mistaken, but I think it can it may continue to grow. But yeah, that's awesome, I think. Yeah, I mean, that that's absolutely crazy. And this year, uh, you know, the, the announcements for the uh, nominees came out and stuff for... Uh, uh, you know, the next Grammy Awards. And uh, in my category, um, my main category, you know, the kids' music thing, it's all indie. There's, there, there wasn't any, uh, in, you know, national uh, major label. It was all indie this year, which is, wow, crazy. That is that is awesome. I mean, yeah. like, I mean, like, I know, I personally know everybody that's up for a Grammy Award this year. That's just nuts. And I'd like that's... to thank everybody that did not vote for me. <laughs> yeah, you're waiting for somebody to thank you. <laughs> Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. I, that's right. I needed to release something in order. Yeah, I got burned out when I did those 12 CDs. I haven't, like, recorded a lot in the last couple of years. I need to fix that. That was 2012 because it was all 12, 12 albums, 12 months, 2012. 12 right? songs. Yeah, that was crazy. Anyway, moving moving on. Uh, but i just like to throw that out there. I thought that was really interesting. And one other thing, uh, two, 2014 was the beginning of, of the emergence of the podcast as being a a really major uh source of of information and entertainment uh when Apple made a bold move and made the uh podcast app uh like a native part of their operating system for their iPhone so not only did you get a U2 album but you also can't get rid of the uh podcast app which means a lot of people are looking at this thing now saying, what the heck is this? So the whole concept of on-demand uh, internet radio, so to speak, podcasting, uh, was put in front of millions and millions of more people. So hopefully for folks like us, uh, you know, uh, and uh, you know, there's an opportunity for us to uh, get our message out to more people because the podcast awareness uh, uh, level has gone way up in 2014. And yeah. We're looking forward to see what happens. Yeah, and, and obviously if, if you're listening to this podcast, you already are hip to how to access it and, you know, the technology. There's many different ways to, to get it. And you, yeah, the, the podcast app. On the on the iPhones that are are their iOS devices are, are a very big way. Right. There's also um, not Spreaker, but what's the other one that's in the cars and all that? Um, well, well, there's Stitcher Radio. Stitcher is the one, yeah. Stitcher, iHeart Radio also does podcasting. Now, see, that's another thing. A lot of different uh, in 2014 different outlets that were primarily. Uh, bringing terrestrial radio to the internet is now uh, gravitating towards on-demand content. Uh, aka podcast yeah. so uh, exciting times for folks like us yeah and the podcasting thing it's another thing where like the average person can have access to the playing field just like you know those commercial radio stations that get online um and the thing and i've been yeah and i've been well i've been podcasting since 2005 i believe because i think 2004 was when uh was it was kind of a former mtv vj sort of made it i think uh he may, I don't either. He, I'm not sure if he coined the term, but he started one of the first people to get the word spread. I can't think of his name now. Was that was that Adam Curry? Yes, it was. So yeah. thank you very much. <laughs> exactly. Um, I haven't heard much about him lately, but uh, so yeah, I've been online. You know, again, it was very sporadic uh, publishing of episodes. Um, but uh, dear, yeah, had, dear, dear listeners of the music. <laughs> Marketing Monday podcast. This is why you should listen to the show and listen to what Bob has to say because Bob is a pioneer. That's right. 2005, man. That was almost like the 10 years ago. That's right. I remember when he made his first podcast using stone tablets and a chisel. (laughs) You sound just like the car talk guys right now. I know. That's that's awesome. You have have a thing for car talk. I don't know what it is. Well, you remind me, yeah, yeah. This this totally has that vibe. So, I, and, and I lo- and I love car talk, and uh, yeah, I, I still listen to the reruns. Anyway, yes, yeah, stones, yeah, stone tablets, and we had to, yeah, I was it was one of those early, you know, yeah. Imagine the uh, what's it called, the Victrola or whatever. 
<laughs> the needle right, and the yeah. horn and whatever. That's right. Yeah, that's right. The original podcast brought to you by the Edison uh, sil- Sound Cylinder Company. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Moving. So we, yeah, we used cans and strings back in the old days to, get to, to, to communicate it. It was all live. Anyway, but the cool. So here's the thing about podcasts, which which because it almost seems like well, it's audio only, and everybody's on YouTube and all this stuff. The thing about podcasts, unlike blog posts. So with a blog post, there's still a lot of people doing blogs and writing, but you have to spend time to focus on it to read it as a consumer of it and the fans you're trying to reach they have to stop what they're doing to read and focus um with you with videos now you i know you can listen to spoken word videos i know you you repost these podcasts on your youtube channel um with the, just a little like a, a a logo or something right so people can actually find them on youtube these I episodes do. i do yeah, which is yeah. very smart i mean is that a function of spreaker i think that allows you to do that well great now i don't seem so smart so you made it sound like my oh, idea oh i'm sorry <laughs> Well, you can automate it. Why not? Well, no, yeah, actually, uh, and and you could do that with some other apps and stuff as well. But yeah, uh, uh, there's like a little button when when we publish, we go through Spreaker. Now, a lot of people, I don't know if I want to make this a podcasting episode, but I will for just a moment. Is uh, I mean, a, an episode about podcasting because there's lots of great shows about that. But uh, when you make a podcast, you got to put it somewhere, and then once you put it somewhere, then you have to syndicate it, right? So. Uh, Spreaker does make it pretty simple to syndicate by just pressing a couple buttons, and it goes to Facebook, it goes to Twitter, it goes to Tumblr. Now I've, I've been putting it on Tumblr, and uh, you know, trying to find what all the kids are into, Bob. You know, that's right. And, uh, and of course, it puts a uh, uh, a audio version on YouTube, which is wonderful because some people, you know, actually, it's really funny. My son, who I reference quite a bit here, uh, the drummer for bigandtallband.com. dot uh, com. Do you like that? That was good, wasn't it? Uh, nice. Is uh, you know he actually he's a YouTuber totally he's totally into YouTube and uh, and I say well I'm all about the audio you know me and him we always talk about this and he goes well he says I mostly put on YouTube and then I do other things on my computer while YouTube is playing in the background so yeah he actually uses YouTube not to look at it. He yeah, actually listens I've been, to it. It's kind I've been of doing that more and more lately too, and so that's why that's why I sort of made that disclaimer. Um, but for other types, for a, lot, a good chunk of the videos out there, your music videos and so on that our that our listeners will be creating, um, yeah, it is. You again, you have to stop what you're doing to watch, you know, and listen. Um, although you have the the option of just listening, um, but with a podcast, it's strictly audio. And the cool thing about it is, people can consume podcasts while they do other things, which 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 really makes it unique in the online realm. Uh, you can't read a book while you do other things. You can't, you know, <laughs> do other. You can't read a blog post or an article, uh, but you can listen to a podcast while you drive, which is why they're becoming more and more uh, readily accessible in cars. And with built in, you know, uh, whatever they call those in cars. Uh, it's not an app, but you know what I mean? Um, and you can do it while you work out, while you do, you know, what, whatever. Uh, and so that's, so that's why they're growing in popularity. They're more accessible. And so as a musician, what, the reason I think we're bringing this up, an actionable thing is one, you can seek out podcasts that cater either to your musical style or that they're talk shows that cater to a theme. You know, maybe you're big in the environment or you're bringing, you know, something the- thematically your music uh, people use your music to relax so you you look, seek out those types of shows where you could be a guest and talk about the power of music in, in that on that topic so you can seek out podcasts to get exposure or if you really want to grab the bull by the horns you can create your own podcast like Billy and I do <laughs> excuse me uh, thank you oh, oh I hear my daughter in the background I'm like sneezing like crazy here and I hear this voice through the door excuse you or bless you <laughs> Yes, excuse me. All right. Okay. I may, I may actually, I may, I may actually end up having to edit some of that out, man. But anyway, uh, oh, what the or heck? Not. We'll, we'll leave it in. So actually, so that that brings us to our show. And uh, do you know it was way back in February of 2014, February 17th to be exact. Uh, we launched our very first episode called "Ready for This, Bob." Remember your big butt. When was it? In February seventeenth, two thousand fourteen. Wow, I thought I thought it was like in the spring. I thought it was like April or something. February seventeenth, two thousand fourteen. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Let's go with that. No, I mean I, I have all the stuff documented, man. I'm, wow. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Cool. And so that was our very first episode, and uh, 
And we had a decent amount of people listen to it, which is interesting because uh, we weren't even syndicated yet. I just kind of had it up on Spreaker, and um, we had probably almost almost a thousand people check that show out. Uh, uh, and that was our first episode. And your big butt, your big butt, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, that was our, our first episode. Yeah. And so this is a nice segue into uh, the most popular music marketing Monday episodes of the past uh, of the past year. Yeah. Um, so you want to you want to you want to start it with the top, or you want to like no, no, build, work your way up, or what? We're gonna do like we're gonna do like David Letterman here. I'm gonna start from number ten. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Our ten. Our, okay. Our tenth most popular episode was episode twenty one, which was called "How to Ruin Your Music Career," which is kind of based off of a. Uh, um, some blogging you did, I think. Yeah, I did a blog post and a video on how to how to yeah how to destroy your music career as a tongue in cheek, you know, with the worst practices. Yeah, that that was a fun episode. No, episode number nine, tough love guide to email marketing. Ooh, that's interesting. You know, I I, I I'm trying to figure out uh, what makes these episodes as popular as they are as I'm looking at them, and because they're kind of like a little. All over the board, as you'll see. Episode number eight, rebranding your new music identity. That that was a pretty recent one, I think. That, that was, yeah. And uh, that was that was interesting. Where uh, we had a, a listener, um, my friend, who I can't remember right. Uh, Ellen, 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 Ellen yeah. Allard. Yep, yeah. uh, was going through some changes where her partner and her kind of separated her husband. And, uh, you know, they were going in different directions. And what do you do? You know, you've created this brand. Now now you have a new brand, you know. So that's kind of interesting. And and uh, moving on, let's see, that, that was 10, 9, 8, 7. Episode 7. Now, this was cool. This went on for like two or three episodes. But the first episode was a runaway hit. Summer Music Festivals and Fairs Part 1. Mm. And uh, we we really dug into that one quite a bit, and that was uh, we did that one kind of actually in the summer uh, during the Fair and Festival uh, season. And by the way, I guess uh, a little value added for our listeners right now: if you're planning on playing summer festivals and fairs, the time to book them is now. Uh, most of the summer uh, festivals and fairs are booking between December and February. So uh, if you're thinking that you want to play, you know, summer gigs, you should be booking those now. You should be waiting until. Uh, you know, spring. Okay. That was the time. Yeah, we had like at least three, maybe four episodes on just on that whole topic. Of yes, we did. Booking into the whole process. Cool, cool. Episode six. I need to have a drum roll in the background. <laughs> <laughs> okay. e- episode six, uh, <laughs> most popular, was Music Publicity 101 Media Exposure, which was Ooh. another one of your, um, you know, one of the things that you've uh, been blogging about and writing about uh, incessantly for years. Yeah, because if it's based on my ten years of publishing a local music magazine here in my hometown, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's something I know a bit about, and that so that was a fun one. I'm glad it was popular. Why? Wasn't that number six spot? Yep, cool. Yep. Yep. Okay. Number continuing fi- our countdown. Okay. Number five. This is this is interesting. Uh, number five was episode thirty one. Was fan fun your music? No Kickstarter. Mm. And it was interesting because we all, we did a few shows on this, and uh, we did one about no Kickstarter, one about Kickstarter, but the not using the fan funding uh, platforms was a huge episode for us, Real, really great. And maybe it's because we did the opposite of everybody's talking about Kickstarter best practices, and we actually took the opposite, you know. Exactly. So now, cool. one, two, three, four. So now, four ch- number four. Up. Now, check this out. This is ironic. The fourth most popular episode is also episode number four. Ooh. Ah, ooh. So our fourth show way, way back, you know, in the Stone Age, back in March, was First Step to Music Career Success. Mm. You know? And and actually, I'm noticing a little bit of, uh, as I'm reading this now, I'm noticing a little bit of um, a trend here. And you'll see as we get to that one, you know, especially. Now, uh, number three was making money with your music dot 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 really question mark uh so uh that that one really we we jumped uh listenership up like by a third on that one that was really big one so making money with your music which also prompted uh my new show that i do without you and i miss you bob i really do miss you on that show yeah, I know. I'm there to support you, and you know when you need to take a bite of your sandwich or <laughs> take a drink or blow your nose. You know, you know I'm, yeah. I'm there to fill in the void. And 
<laughs> so, uh, so for those of you that, that haven't checked it out yet, uh, of course, I have a show called Making Money, Making Music, which you can find on Spreaker. We'll be syndicating that. So, so that topic of making money was number three number in the three. big countdown. Wow, that's right. cool. And so we're coming up to number two now. Number two goes way back again to our seventh episode, What to Do Before You Book the Gig. Ooh, wow. And that show was twice as popular as any of the 